Hello and welcome to a quick and dirty guide to tanking and threat generation in New World. I am Winslow and today I'm going to show you the basics of generating threat and tanking damage on the island of Eternum. Let's jump right into it. If you're looking for a specific section, feel free to check out the chapter selections below. In New World, there are no set classes. Your equipment, stat distribution, and weapons determine what your party role will be. For this guide, I'm going to show you a pretty standard tank setup with sword and shield. First, let's discuss tanking hits from enemies and surviving. There are two main ways to do this, avoidance and mitigation. By avoidance, you can dodge out of the way of danger. By mitigation, you will block and absorb hits with high armor and health. Both are excellent ways to tank in New World, as with a number of other games, the mechanics are all essentially the same. With avoidance, you will likely want to use lighter armor. In New World, your ability to dodge out of the way is determined by your equipped inventory weight. This is only determined by your armor, and if wearing one, a shield. Your actual encumbrance for carried items do not affect this. At light, you do a quick roll that covers a lot of distance. You also gain plus 20% damage and healing. At medium, you do a short hop. You also gain 10% damage and plus 10% increase to the duration of crowd control effects. At heavy, you do just a short sidestep but gain plus 15% block stability and 20% duration to your crowd control. So how does this help us in tanking? Well, let's see all three weight levels in action when trying to avoid damage. You can see that light encumbrance will allow you to get farther out of the way faster, but if you get hit, you will likely take more damage because lighter armor has a lower armor value. The medium armor still lets you take some hits, but also allows you to get out of the way, albeit a bit slower. The heavy armor makes you slower and harder to get out of the way, but by adding in a shield, you can easily block hits and take no damage at all. You can only use and benefit from a shield while using a sword, but you can block with all weapons, though the shield will give you some of the best block rating. Blocking costs stamina, and it varies based on the hit taken. Light versus heavy hits or a special charge up attack from an enemy can all take more stamina to block, and while actively blocking, your stamina won't regenerate. This becomes a major downside to heavy armor tanking because if you then need to take a sidestep, you will only have a little bit of stamina left. Okay, now let's talk about some threat generation and how to hold the target on you. You're no good as a tank if nothing is hitting you because you aren't threatening enough. While grouping with damage dealers and healers, they will also generate threat from their own actions. Since it's largely calculated based on damage or healing output, a tank needs to generate additional threat in order to hold targets on them. I will warn you that this is not at all explained in game and it is not intuitive at first. You can be using a sword and shield with full plate mail and still generate very low threat, but there are some ways to boost it with weapon skills. The sword and shield mastery under Defender will give you three active abilities, with shield bash and defiant stance having the ability to taunt. They will only gain this though if you have a gem socket in your sword and put a cut carnelian in it. This will augment your attacks to include a taunt ability, both of which hit multiple targets. The sword will also gain an increase to threat generation based on the quality of the gem. In addition to sword and shield, there are also taunts on the spear ability of vault kick, the hatchet ability of berserk, the great axe ability of reap, and the warhammer's ability of shockwave. These melee weapons all gain bonuses from high strength, so with proper training, you should be able to use them all with equivalent ease. The only time you don't get a block with one of these is if you have trained Hatchet for throwing with the right mouse button. Its throw mechanic replaces block. I would recommend for a full tank build to use Sword and Shield for main and then one of these secondary weapons for an additional emergency taunt. You can freely switch weapons in combat, and the abilities all have a cooldown on them. The most important part about this is that this needs to be with a weapon that has a gem socket, that specifically has a carnelian placed in it. Sword and Shield also has a minor perk called Final Blow, where your third light strike generates additional damage and threat, which is a good way to maintain your threat if your taunts are on cooldown. If you follow these simple steps, you will most certainly become more effective as a tank. Your role is to take the hits and keep your damage dealers and healer out of trouble. Your healer will most likely understand this, but damage dealers often go all out on even the most basic of targets, because they like seeing big numbers. Just pat them on the head for doing a good job and keep them safe, because without them surviving, your boss fight could be very long or even impossible to finish. What are your thoughts on New World tanking? 
Do you have something creative that you've tried outside of what was covered? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this New World Gameplay Guide. I am Winslow, and if you found this guide helpful, please consider leaving a like. I greatly appreciate your time and support, and we'll catch up next time.